who are the Western politicians? They're, they, they're, it's, it, these are democracies. They are people just like you and me. They're not superheroes. Um, so uh, the Western politicians, uh, they are very weak on their understanding with nuance and depth how the Putin regime actually works. And that has been the gap that I thought I could help close uh, by publishing the very first letter. At that point, regardless of whether it was real from inside the FSB or not, the information inside it is real. It's, it's correct. There's no indication that any information that's in there is somehow falsified at all to this day. To the contrary, a lot of things... So these letters have had a lot of predictive power. Um, one of the key examples that stands out, but it's not the only example at all, is his mention of the operation by the GRU to fabricate evidence to accuse Ukraine of working on building a dirty bomb like to attack Russia as a as a post invasion explanation of why the invasion happened that letter was published on i mean whatever day it was published on i can't remember right now i translated it posted on the next day within several hours of me posting that translation just serendipitously uh, the kremlin official communication mirrored exactly that, that accusation that Ukraine is building a dirty bomb to attack Russia, right? This stuff is just, it's, it's all crazy. It's very simplistic, I think, at the end of the day. Um, once, once we, you know, get a deeper understanding of how this, like, Russian, you know, Kremlin propaganda works, it's, it's, not, it's not that sophisticated. But there, there is a, a serious problem, I think, with with the Western media in really just uh, parroting and just amplifying whatever the Russian propaganda is coming out. Like that message itself is somehow news. That's a huge problem. They need if they're going to report on Russian propaganda, they need to actually really paint a nuanced context around it, why it's happening and how to interpret that propaganda if they really want to cover it. I don't really see much point in covering it personally, <laughs> but if they're going to cover it, I think it's their obligation. But the, the problem with that is that they can't offer that context and they can't offer that correct lens through which that kind of Russian propaganda needs to be viewed exactly because they don't understand Russia because the journalists are normal people too. They're regular people like you and me. So um, th the upcoming information that uh, we will be publishing in a coordinated manner with Vladimir. And again, this is something that I have authorization from Vladimir to tell you. Is is some is is what will really demonstrate. Um, it will provide further uh, very specific information that the wind of change is hoping will convince the West to take these letters seriously. <laughs> these aren't some fakes. This isn't some disinformation. This, this started very organically between two real people. And I think another problem that we have in the West, uh, it has to do with, um, you know, like movies, um, this, um, this culture of how we perceive 
our own intelligence services. It, it's a much healthier approach and a state of mind to have when um, any, any um, government intelligence organization is being discussed from a prism that it is a structure just like any private business, right? Like any company, any big company, they're, they're people that are really good. There are people that are not so good. Not necessarily the right people might be getting promoted and making the decisions. Because everybody is, it's, it's all people. They're, they're not all just like crazy superheroes with superpowers. They're, they're mostly filled with very intelligent people that do know what they're doing. So if we just, you know, take a step back and, and, and approach it with, from that perspective, I think it will really help ground yourself in being able to think critically about all these goings on. 